Merry Christmas! It took three days for this colorful, subjectively beautiful uh, piece of painted canvas to dry after I created it with my family as you saw in the previous video if you have watched it um, the creation of this painting you would have seen what it finally looked like but because this is an experiment I'm going to be reviewing all the right things I did and all the blunders I made because there were plenty of them as you would have noticed in the previous video as well and because I want to repeat this experiment as many times as it takes for me to get it right here is the first review of this experiment and if you have not subscribed already then please do so because you're going to miss out on all the silly experiments I'm going to do and then who's gonna help me get it right because you know I can't be doing all the thinking around here right then you know what before I start I need to get something off my chest who said that Christmas is a holiday I have not been as busy since last Christmas Christmas is the time when I'm stressing out the most and I have so much stuff to do you know work filming presents cooking food whatever anything you know and especially if you have relatives or friends somewhere else in the world, then you have to think about postage and packaging for the whole world. And it's so annoying. Anyway, art. Right then, so I'm going to quickly go through the basic equipment that you will need to start doing this experiment. Uh, now, obviously you need paint. Now, I use just poster cheap paint because it's, a, it's an experiment um, and we want to see how everything interacts. Um, obviously, the disadvantage of this paint is that it dries quite kind of crayony, pastel color and it's not really realistic to what it looks in the tube but that is absolutely fine then obviously you need balloons both water balloons and normal balloons are absolutely fine water balloons are a bit smaller and the big and the big proper thick balloons actually kind of droop and they both create different splatters but I have not found out exactly the difference yet because it was a bit of a chaotic time uh, during the experiment then you also need something to stick the balloons on the board with and I used basically what are the pin pin pins pin boards whatever for, for those cork boards obviously you're going to need darts which I bought from Amazon like I got 12 of them they were relatively cheap like 10 pounds or something they, they work perfectly fine they're metal tipped you know I think they're quite cheap because this comes off like you they're kind of fat packed you know but you know uh, they work you know quite well and also one of the most important parts of this experiment is that you need a canvas or a board. And the reason I say that is because since you're using darts to uh, pop the balloons, if you just use a canvas and there, and there being no hard back on the back, um, then the darts are just going to rip straight through the canvas and create huge holes. Now you do have the option of uh, using kind of an MDF board or, 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 or something of the sort, um, uh, which I did consider, but then I have to, you know, paint over it with white and things like that and that was just not the look I was going for this time uh, but then that kind of solves the problem of the canvas ripping in the backboard in but in this case I did use a canvas just a normal canvas and, uh, and I stuck uh, four layers of corrugate, corrugated cardboard on the back actually it's not stuck it's wedged in you know um, and it actually it did quite well none of the canvas stripped obviously that it has holes um, but as you see I don't know if you can see actually ugh, this is too big for the shot <laughs> okay yeah you can see it a little bit here see so the force of some of the darts was too quite quite, quite harsh so we ended up pushing pushing the uh, it ended up pushing the board the board a little bit backwards but nothing too catastrophic so the most important decision that you need to make is what you're going to do your painting on so is it going to be canvas mdf uh, whatever it is it all affects what, what you do later on as well we're going to be experimenting with most of these backgrounds so i will take your suggestions as to what background uh, backboards to use so please let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas of how to improve the situation with the backboard now i will be doing a whole video on how to fill balloons as soon as i have mastered it this time around we did so many different uh, different ways of filling them uh we tried separate bottles we tried just 
putting, you know, uh, painting the balloons first, there, there's some water, and then blowing some air into it, which, um, and then a few other things around it. I did end up with quite a bit of paint in my mouth, and before you ask, no, it is not really harmful to, uh, for you to digest paint, but don't, because it's not either healthy for you. By the way, I'm getting ill, guys, and tomorrow probably will not be able to talk, so I need to finish filming this today. The only thing I'll add more on the fin filling balloons is that uh, it's much easier to obviously fill the balloons if you have the, the paint and water mixed together, which makes it more runny, but for this particular exercise, it did not work very well because although we filled the balloons effectively and quite fast, um, uh, it had, the paint was actually too runny. And because you have gravity pulling the paint down, as you saw uh, by, you know, the end, most of that original paint um, was, was completely gone. It was just on the floor. There were, there were puddles on the floor of colorful uh, water, basically. In the second round, we just uh, uh, winged it and filled balloons with pure paint, and then we got this beautiful, very bold um, uh, co colors here uh, using the, the poster paint. At the end, it did work, but it was kind of hectic. It was also getting dark. I don't know whether you noticed. You probably did. Um, it was getting really dark because we did it in the evening. Um, so apologies for that. <laughs> Let's get on with actually removing the uh, the masking. Um, so let's see what's left over and what we need to fix. <laughs> so this is paper and there's a bit of masking tape here as well. Now this is a very very rudimentary job. Now see obviously it's very very uh, colored here so definitely do not use paper for this. Okay the, oh, the paper looked lovely d d d d d during the, the shooting. Now, the masking tape, this actually did a very good job, I think. See, the canvas is quite clear. Obviously, I did not apply the masking fluid very efficiently. I was quite conservative with it. So you have these kind of pretty streaks here, which I actually quite am starting to like. So, whee! Right, so I'm going to remove everything and then assess it, okay? It's like the paper has like almost fused with the camera, so definitely don't use paper. See, I need you guys. You need to stop me from doing stupid things like this. Also, poster paint comes off. <laughs> Masking tape is definitely a winner. Everywhere I put masking tape, it's white. And those lines are just because I didn't put enough masking fluid. Sorry, masking fluid, no masking tape. could have gone better. Uh, let's have a look how we can fix it. <laughs> Magic! Uh, this is what it was supposed to look like when I removed the stencil, so close to it anyway. And this was a pain to do. Big time. It took a really, really long time. If you haven't noticed, I don't sound the same as I did a few seconds ago. As I said, I am getting ill, and 24 hours later, hey ho, I am ill and I'm losing my voice. Excuse me. Still alive. So yes, it took a really long time to correct uh, the, the thing, the paint that seeped through where it shouldn't have. And as you see, it's still a bit pinkish in places. Um, though I kind of like that, I'm, I think I'm going to use that for, for, for the for a, a finished product. Paint number two, the poster paint, it kept dusting off, like I said earlier. Um, uh, but the problem was that even in the places where there was just masking uh, fluid, and I removed it, and as you saw, it was relatively clean underneath there, um, the places where I had to rub, the dusting just messed up that, that white, white area as well. So then I had to put even more white paint, uh, white paint on it, which took even longer. So poster paint is giving me a headache. It's not just my fever. 
pain number three. It was dealing with all of the little uh, leftover pieces of paper or masking fluid that I, I haven't I haven't spotted. Um, or basically, it created it creates uh, irregularities like it's quite bumpy in places. Um, you know, some of it is created by the like lots of paint in one place, and not that that's just the product of the paint you know falling down. These are all things that uh, I'm going to take into account next time I, I, I do this experiment and it will be relatively soon um, so please let me know your suggestions as how I can improve my technique and, me and method here because I really want to get uh, to a high quality uh, technique so I can get a high quality uh, uh, product out of, uh, out of this um, um, method I said method too many times I'm, my brain is frying. You know, for continuity's sake, so we can have a seamless cut and it can seem that nothing has changed. I always sound like this, you know, like, 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 like I don't have a nose. <sighs> so in the last 30 seconds, here is the quickie pro pro process to make this fit for human eyes. <laughs> Right, so this is all for 2017. I take your, your ideas and your requests. So go down to the comment section below and le leave your feedback and your ideas how we can improve any, this experiment or for any new experiments in 2018. So happy new year and I'll see you in 2018.